topic I wanted to cover today was mortality and the realities of a mortal life. So it goes without saying, you, the viewer, is going to die at some point. Even if medical technology advances very quickly, or crazy things like mind uploading become possible, you will die at some point through time. Death is an unknown to us here in the world. We may have many speculations, religions, hopes, or fears for what happens, but nothing concrete. In all likelihood, death is simply the end of existence and observation. So keeping that in mind, not knowing what the alternative of death contains, the sure thing of life has immense value. Even if you think we live in a degenerate clown world, or your life is filled with dysfunction, or there is some intense stress on your person, it is likely better than the alternative of not existing at all. But then what should a person fill this valuable time alive with? People all have different answers for this question. Some fill it with as much hedonistic and material pleasure as they possibly can, discarding all else for wealth. Others try to build a legacy, to leave something behind, be it a family, an institution, works of art, or achievements in policy or law. Those that support legacy will scoff and berate the short-sighted hedonists, preaching ideals about family, a better society, and the future of people. Some in the legacy camp are selfish, and the thought of being forgotten upsets them. But ultimately, no matter how famous one is, no matter how big one's contribution to the world becomes, that person will fade to irrelevance. Their influence will wane, their name will slip from the minds of others, and history will forget or distort them into a footnote. Genes are the most simplistic and minor contribution to human legacy. They ultimately pale in comparison to the effect of memes throughout time. Consider Aristotle, a man who lived thousands of years ago with a foreign culture and language. His teachings influenced scholarship for millennia and are still remembered today, although certainly to a lesser degree than in the past. It only takes one generation for a meme to take root in progeny and distort them into something unrecognizable. Thus, genes and family are not a reliable form of legacy to a mortal person, especially in a society that repeatedly devalues family. If legacy is measured, it can best be shown by how many people's actions are influenced by the ideas and works of a person after their death. Marx was an obscure thinker until his thoughts were used by a variety of strong-arm political leaders. They influenced the lives of millions, and now his ideas infest the academia world over. So, it is both the number of people and their relative influence that determines the power of one's legacy. Despite the long-lasting legacies of many men, the existence of humans is cosmically irrelevant, and before long, civilization, humanity, and technology will likely turn to dust. Now, this statement can be called many things, a black pill, edgy, nihilistic, with a wicked sense of humor. But it is simply the truth of being a mortal in a society of mortal people in the physical world. There is no reason to get upset at the truth, or rage against it, or berate people who point it out. Now it is fine to break those who use this truth as an excuse to engage in terrible asocial behavior, degeneracy, and complete selfishness, because it does not excuse any of those behaviors. But stating the truth, or using it to challenge the nonsensical priorities and passions of short-sighted people, is perfectly acceptable. The question is how to deal with this fact in life, and the answer is very simple. Don't bother getting worked up about your material conditions, or your place in the hierarchy, or even your ability to leave a legacy. Life is transient. No one remembers the richest pottery merchant in Rome in 30 AD. Even if that man worked his ass off, was well regarded socially, ingratiated himself with a slew of Senate politicians, his existence has no effect on the world or humanity today. Dozens of European kings are not remembered, despite having complete dominion over men and land for decades. Nor even the most entertaining comedian, best orator, or popular socialite from centuries past. In all likelihood, you, the people around you, the celebrities that are seen as important, the most influential politicians of the day, will be forgotten, their societies warped or destroyed, their thoughts now seen as irrelevant. Time will march on, it will wipe away everything, it will turn the pyramids to dust. 
There is no reason, then, to lament one's arbitrary success and existence, or to waste time appeasing people's wishes or their arbitrary standards. You will be surprised how freeing it is to accept transience and mortality. No longer do things that stress and keep you up at night seem all that miserable. In fact, you may radically discard maintaining them because of their transient nature and ultimate fertility. No one can fight the tide forever, and there's no reason to fight the tide. But this does not mean to abandon everything and turn into a degenerate conduit for hedonism, or commit crimes at the expense of other people. One will quickly find depression if they follow meaningless hedonistic consumption. One should live virtuously so they can sleep soundly at night for being truthful, charitable, humble, and kind. They should remind others to do the same, not out of some sense of superiority, but because it will improve their time on earth and your own time when you spend it with them. Find an interesting creative endeavor, be it family, scholarship, art, whatever resonates with your being, and work towards using your mortal time usefully. When you expire, you can be happy knowing your time was spent in the way you want, building to the goal you wished without wasting precious time on the capricious whims of others. The temporary nature of life should be a boon, freeing you from the slew of immortal concerns people devote themselves to in a misguided manner. We aren't going to live forever, nor the memory of us, nor the memory of our children, or our civilization, or any of it. Time is cruel. Life is a desperate and panicked run towards death for most. Instead of panicking about any variety of nonsense that society around you says is important, take your time to spend each second wisely to your own preference. When you start valuing your time as a mortal person to either explore or create, you will look around you and see people fighting, dying, and stressing over trinkets. You will see the richest men be slaves to their own wealth and responsibilities, as if they aren't wealthy at all. You will see entire societies and institutions built around the desperate prolonging of the inevitable. Why fear and prolong death when one can instead learn to embrace it? All people will die. All people before you have. You are not special, and you will not escape it. So, why fear it? Why would you scrounge and scrape and steal from others in fear from the reaper? Your journey to the inevitable outcome we all face should be a calm and serene one. It should be filled with the appreciation of beauty, the creation of the useful, and the contemplation of the interesting. And when it comes to take you, you are more than well satisfied by what you have done. There is no need to cloy for God or worry about the future of society. It was beyond your control to begin with. You can simply move on, knowing that life was well lived, and that as a mortal creature you did not dawdle like an animal, but lived in a fitting way, unperturbed. This is a hallmark of many Eastern philosophies, to be sure, but it was also realized by the true Stoic philosophers of Rome. The spirituality of the monotheistic religions propelled popular thought away from this truth of the transience of life. Now, people will attack those who live in this way, not out of jealousy or anger, but out of fear. Fear that their way of life isn't going to amount to what they think, and fear of not meeting the expectations of others. Fear of inevitable death. A fear born out of a sense of inadequacy manufactured by overpassionate thought and ignoring the truth. People fight desperately for and against meaning when there is no need to fight at all. People will call it cowardly, slave morality, and overly passive. But those who practice it will live a rich life with satisfaction and peace, while others around them will flounder. And although their individual names will not likely be remembered, their advice will find a new welcoming mind and repeat until all the stars in the sky go dark.